This week I got a question from a viewer. Hey Joe, you've been retired five years. What's your advice on how to live the first year of retirement? Great question. I made a video probably three years ago on this topic. So I'm reflecting back now five years on what I did my uh, initial year of retirement and thought this could be helpful, maybe even exciting and something that maybe you can get excited about uh, to make you jump into this crazy thing called retirement because uh, financially, it's always gonna make sense to keep working, but uh, there's a lot of life to be lived out there uh, in your 50s and 60s if, if you can pull that off. Okay, next, I got a lot of positive feedback on, I added a home video to my last couple videos ago. Yeah, a couple videos ago. So I added another one here. It's in Idaho. Idaho, my daughter lived there near Twin Falls. What? Well, it's actually in Twin Falls, right on the Snake River Canyon. So I got a video of some two people doing base jumping off the Perrine Bridge uh, in Twin Falls. It's also the location where Evil Knievel tried to jump the Snake River Canyon, I think that was in 1974. So hold on for that, that's at the very end. So getting into the video on your first year of retirement, now I'm gonna assume you got all your money stuff worked out, okay? So this is not about money. Number one, discuss your ideas and visions of retirement with your spouse. This is important, very, very important. I didn't do a great job of this. That's why I got it first. Talk about the big things. Are you planning on travel? Planning on downsizing? Planning on moving close to the kids? Are you gonna start a business? Are you gonna work part-time? Those big things that are gonna occupy a lot of your time, um, have them uh, talked about. Don't make it a surprise. The second part of this to discuss with your spouse is what's your vision of daily life? Just your average Tuesday. Are you gonna learn to cook? Are you gonna learn to smoke meat? I love my pellet grill. <laughs> Are you gonna exercise daily? What kind of exercise? Is it alone or is it with your spouse? Are you gonna get into gardening? You gonna do some volunteer work? I paint for Habitat for Humanity. I do some work at the church. I'm on the board for parks. I'm on the HOA for my subdivision. Uh, I started a retirement group. We're meeting next week. That's looking at financial part of uh, retirement where we do intimate sharing. You've heard me talk about that before. Don't make a move without that group. I also have another retirement group where we just talk about current events. We met this morning at a donut shop. I eat no donuts. <laughs> and we just talk about life and laugh at it and um, share uh, stories. And sometimes we offer help on, you know, what are you doing for dental insurance? What are you doing about life insurance? Long-term care, we, we share those things. And then I uh, co-started a study group. We study history. This month, next week, is actually Will Rogers. So the host, we have five people in the group. The host picks a topic, we research it, study it. Two weeks before the meeting, we have questions, and it's not names, dates, places, times. It's how does that apply to today? What, can, what did we learn from that that can uh, help our lives and our community today? So what's that look like? Some of those journeys I'm on with my wife, some of them I'm on by myself. Get that stuff out of the way first before you retire, okay? Okay, then plan something exciting for the six, first six months travel, okay? I went to Mazatlan, Mexico for a family wedding, stayed there a couple weeks. Went to Norfolk, Virginia for my nephew that's in the Navy. Uh, he got married. I had a tour of the Abraham Lincoln aircraft carrier, super cool. We toured the area, went to Thomas Jefferson's home. Um, what's that, Jamestown is there. Uh, just a lot of history in that area. Then uh, we went on spring break to Orlando with my daughter, who was, I think she was a senior at the time uh, in college. Um, so we went there. 
I, I was considering adding a video of that spring break. There was me dancing on stage. My wife volunteered me to go up on stage with the uh, dancers at uh, uh, one of the theme parks there, and I decided not to show that one. <laughs> uh, not too flattering. And then we went to Colorado. I have a son that lives uh, near Denver, Colorado. So we had a lot of travel packed into the first six months. What? Why do I say have something exciting the first six months? Ours was travel. You're going to need something emotional to jump into retirement. If you sit down analytically and you look at retirement, it's not going to make sense. It's going to make sense to keep working. But life is short. And life is about experiences and relationships, I believe. You're going to have to decide what it is for you. That's where I wanted to spend my time. And getting detailed about what you're going to do the first six months will give you, gave me, the push I needed to leave when I did. Because it was not a good financial decision to leave when I did. It would have been better to work 50 more years, okay? And it's going to be that same way for you. You gotta do something to get to combat the one more year trap. The market's not right. We got high inflation. There's an election. I'm not sure where things are gonna go. We got a border crisis. You name it, there's a good excuse to work one more year. A lot of people have identity uh, problems. They're concerned, you know, their identity comes from their job. Plan something exciting. To me, that's my very strong advice, something I did and I highly recommend. Also, for that first six months, volunteer for nothing. Say no to every request for your time. Every request for your time. Number one, you've earned it, okay? You've earned this, okay? Say no, take off your shoes, relax, sleep in, <laughs> Do nothing. Watch TV, go for a walk, meet with friends, go out to eat, but do not sign up for any long-term commitment. You're going to be overwhelmed, I was, with, hey, join this group, join this group. We, want to, we need a president of this volunteer group. We need you to volunteer here. Remember, everything you say yes to, you're saying no to something else. So the first six months, it's all about you. And then getting the lay of the landscape, getting a perspective, what options are out there for me, and then say, yes, I'd like to volunteer for Habitat. Yes, I'd like to volunteer for Parks. Yes, I want to start this study group, okay? So say no to everything. That's very important. Probably the best message uh, for you today is to say no. And um, Tell them Joe said to say no. I'm supposed to say no to everything for six months. Blame me when you're talking to your spouse why you can't do something. I, I was told to say no to everything, except for the fun thing that's gonna help you jump. Also, turn off your alarm clock. I got a couple buddies. I, I, I'm just in shock by this. They're retired and they set their alarm clock for 5.30 in the morning every morning and get up and exercise. <laughs> One of the greatest <laughs> <laughs> things about retirement is not having an alarm clock. My alarm go clock goes off about five times a year. <laughs> okay, uh, slow down. This, this was hard for me, slowing down. My career, my promotions, my career advancement, all those things were based on me and my ability to get things done. I could get 10 things done, in a day. Retirement's about bringing that down to one or two. Try to put one thing on your schedule to do that day and relax and enjoy the rest of the day. Shifting from a uh, type A personality, which is drive, 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 to a type B personality that is stop and smell the roses is hard. I'm on that conversion right now. I'm doing pretty good with it. Uh, I was driven. I had a honeydew list, which was a list of things that I wanted to get done in retirement. I had maybe 30 things on that list, and I thought it would take me a couple years to get them done. <laughs> Two months later, I had them all done. So slow down, take time to talk to your friends. If you run into them in the store or out on a walk, 
Sit down on a bench and talk to them for 30 minutes. Slow down, slow down. Carefree timelessness. I was rushed with my relationships while I was working because I was on a mission and now in retirement, slow down. You will cherish the relationships, time you spend with people almost more than anything. Really as much, if not more than the travel. You decide for yourself. Now I do have one money action I wanna put in here because it's, um, it's really, a, after retirement and it, it was a surprise that hit me. And it was to make sure you have a process to give you confidence to spend money. Yeah, I got enough in my nest egg, I got enough saved, I'm using the 4% rule, whatever you're using. You're using your spreadsheets, you're using new retirement software, you have a financial advisor. You got enough money, you can live on this. I'm telling you, after you retire, when you have to pull out your wallet and spend that money, it's a different ball game, okay? Because you're like, oh, I'm not saving anymore. The process of saving is actually pretty easy. You know, save 10, 15, 20%, whatever, whatever you want. Uh, I've got other videos on what I did. But that's, you know, you're just buying every month. My paycheck, that comes out of my paycheck, gone. Spending is a totally different ball game. I have a quarterly process. This is on confidence to spend. I got a whole separate video on this. I'll see if I can link that. Uh, it'll be the last thing on here. I'll link that one. And I have a quarterly process with four actions in it. Number one, I review my budget. Now I do this, like I said, once a quarter, not every week, not every month, because spending goes up and down uh, in retirement, especially if you travel. Look at the budget over three months. Am I spending about what I thought? So if it's a high one month, low the next month, it averages out. Budget. Then I look at my bucket status. Okay, I have three buckets. We've talked about that. You know, I got five years in bucket one, five years in bucket two, the rest in bucket three. I kind of look at what they're doing and they have a specific purpose. purpose. This is not a bucket video. Then I input everything in the new retirement. That's the comprehensive software package that I use. It's outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. The first link below, you'll see that uh, for free two weeks to see the format. I got demonstration videos on that. So I go into new retirement. It gives me a, a, a probability of success. I can look at my funds and see how they're doing. And then I have my retirement group. My retirement group, like I said, we're meeting next week. Every move I make, every move I make, I run by this group. I got a couple of them I'm thinking about. Early stages of thinking about when I run it by this group. Um, I make very little moves, but confidence to spend. I'm telling you, you're gonna be surprised by it because it's huge. It's very big. Um, and it's, it's my number one issue with money right now is I'm not spending as much as I could, okay? And I'm working through that. I'm studying that. I'm working with my retirement group, uh, confidence to spend, and I'm five years into this. This is a big deal, okay? Big deal. Uh, spending in retirement is not the same as saving and spending while you're working. Completely different game. It's football and water polo. Completely different game, okay? What did you do your first year retirement? If you're retired, if you thought it was epic, share it in the comments. Let everyone know. Let everyone learn from your experience. It's Joe out.